What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. And we've been ripping off the premier rookie content out there right now. We're doing the best of it. I don't think there's anyone topping what we're doing right now. We're going to continue rolling with a very quick video. I'm not going to go too far into it. I'm not going to invest a lot of time into it because NFL teams didn't invest a lot into these players. Thus, they are not getting drafted in rookie drafts. In your dynasty, fantasy draft, your rookie draft, something happens after the draft, okay? Typically, you need to load up what we call your taxi squad. Taxi squad, for those of y'all that are unfamiliar, is this little section of your roster that doesn't even count against your active roster where you can put players onto it for a specific amount of time, typically either one year or two years, depending on your league settings, and you let them sit there, all right? You can't take them off. If you take them off, you're not allowed to put them back on. The point is, typically the way my leagues are set up for Dynasty is it's either 26, 28, or 30-man rosters, and that's the active roster. Then you have a taxi squad of either you know two, three, four, five players, depending on, again, what your league settings are. I, I like to have four taxi squad spots in my leagues, along with like 28 active roster spots. Now, you could put any rookie on a taxi squad, and he can sit there for us up to two years. So technically you could be a sophomore on the taxi squad, but that's only if you did not take them off. So basically you're investing into either young players or undeveloped players or dudes that you think are going to take, you know, a year or two years to actually be useful in fantasy or to like, you know, be impactful on an NFL field so that they don't use any active roster spots on your fantasy team, but you still get, it's like, it's like buying, you know, you're buying the dip. You're buying them at the lowest and you're hoping that the stock goes up from pennies up to that Amazon type sheesh. All right. So this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about must add players after your dynasty drafts that you need to be throwing onto your taxi squad this year. You'll know what we got to do. Hit the subscribe button. If you're new, hit the button that looks like this. Tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Let's see. If I didn't already say it, my name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat. And uh, we're going to talk about must add taxi squad players today. And this is based off the ADP that I talked about in my video yesterday or two days ago. Whenever I put that up, pulled from Sleeper. And basically, they have updated ADP on their website from rookie drafts that have been taking place this week. So I looked at the ADP and I went through the list of players that are at spot 49 or later, right? So they're technically undrafted in your rookie draft. And those are the guys you're going to prioritize picking up if you have empty roster spots or you're dumping. You know, a lot of the times you you shoot at these taxi squad players and there's a reason they're taxi squad players. It's very unlikely that they actually hit. So you might have two or three guys from last season that are awful players that never touched the field and have no fucking hopes of doing so. So you want to get rid of them on the taxi squad. You want to replenish, renew, recycle, re-up, get ready for the new year. And that's what we're talking about today. So here's a quick list of players that I think you should prioritize on your taxi squad. We'll go position by position. Quarterback, number one, there's one guy I think is worthwhile having on your taxi squad, and that is Carson Strong. I was very much off of Carson Strong. He was a fate of mine since like February. I talked about him in a bunch of my videos. They will, again, literally let anybody have a microphone these days. There's people touting Carson Strong as the QB1 in this class. Oh, he plays at Nevada, so he doesn't get as much airtime. That's why people, he doesn't, he's, he didn't get drafted because he fucking stinks. But he signs a really fat, contract with the Eagles fat in terms of relative to undrafted free agents and people that like strong that like strong pre-draft are going to somehow use that as like look cars this is a dub for me because Carson Strong got a contract that's bigger than everybody dog he's still making a zillion times less money than the worst drafted quarterback so he goes to the Eagles played at Nevada he signs with the Eagles on the practice squad obviously the quarterback situation in Philadelphia is very much like up for grabs he could make the roster and I think that's about all you can ask for from a lot of taxi squad players because they don't get drafted so they're an uphill battle to even make the roster Carson Strong is probably like the QB my QB six in this class I want to say so don't really love him but you could do worse than Carson Strong on your taxi squad, especially in super flex drafts, of course. And that's the only quarterback worth throwing on your taxi squad, in my humble ass opinion. When we move to the running back position, we have uh, a lot of interesting players. First up, number one is Kennedy Brooks. I love this kid. He's from Oklahoma. I thought he was awesome. He's a smooth, smooth runner. You look at all of his per play efficiency numbers. You're talking about yards created. You're talking about elusive rating per PFF, per Sports Info Solutions. You're talking about 10-yard run rate, 15-yard run rate. So these like bursty plays. He just comes in really unathletic. He's a little bit old. 
I just I love the film, man. I really think Kennedy Brooks. Kennedy Brooks is a guy who run for a thousand yards, three straight seasons. He was the reason that Trey Sermon had to leave Oklahoma. He's the reason that Ramondre Stevenson couldn't get a lot of playing time there. He is good, man. I don't know what I'm missing here when I watch him and think that he's amazing. But the Eagles signed him. That is also another depth chart that's pretty fucking up in the air right now. And I think Kenny Brooks can be the Jordan Howard role in this offense. So Kenny Brooks would be my priority number one at the running back position. We also have uh, Jerrion Ely. He signs with the Chiefs, as does Isaiah Pacheco out of Rutgers. Shout out New Jersey. Both of them signed with the Chiefs. I'm not like overly excited about either of these guys. I would probably prioritize Ely. I think he's like an explosive, under the radar, like cheap version of uh, maybe Kyron Williams. Tough runner probably suited just to play on third downs but that's another situation in kansas city where depth chart is kind of up for grabs man so i think those two guys you could throw in your taxi squads i don't like them anywhere near as much as kennedy brooks i actually probably like abram smith out of baylor a little bit more than those two as well abram smith signs with the new orleans saints and he gets a strong guarantee here uh dollars signing bonus and a two hundred and seven thousand dollar base guarantee so you're talking about $222,000 in total guarantees for an undrafted free agent. The Saints didn't draft a running back. They don't really have anything besides Alvin Kamara on the roster. Abram Smith was a dude that I didn't watch much of. He was a little bit uninspiring on the film, to be honest with you. But I know our boy Noah liked Abram Smith a lot as a sleeper throughout the draft process. So this is what I'm going to keep an eye on. And I will be stashing Kennedy Brooks. I will be stashing Abram Smith. The obvious one at wide receiver is Justin Ross. Out of Clemson, had the Mossa breakout year with Trevor Lawrence as a freshman and has been terrible and injured and out of sight, out of mind off the field, basically, since that dynamite freshman year. It's very possible he's just not good at football. It's possible that his medicals came back like really, really poorly. Um, he's broken a lot of things in his body that you don't want to be breaking as a football player. He's had some very serious injuries, but he also signs with the Chiefs. So they're taking shots on some of these exciting pre-draft prospect players. You could do worse. I mean, the Chiefs wide receiver core, again, is one that's pretty up for grabs right now. You got Juju on a short deal. They do have Sky Moore now. MVS, who's like on a prove-it deal as well. A lot of things can change very quickly. Quickly. But again, these are guys you throw in your taxi squad, you let them sit there for a year, two years, and then you can make the decision whether or not you want to keep holding on to them based on their progress at the NFL level. So these are not guys you're really investing anything into at the moment. And uh, that's really the only wide receiver that I'm like even semi excited about to have on my taxi squad. Last up, we have the tight ends. Now I have two guys that I really like, and they're both out here in the fucking Big Apple. Number one is Jeremy Ruckert. He is the Ohio State tight end that landed in New York. He was the fourth tight end selected in the draft this year in the third round. So pretty good draft capital. I really like Rucker, man. Rucker was a dude who really solid tight end, even in the receiving game, which is obviously why the fuck I'm talking about him. But he was just very overshadowed at Ohio State. His raw numbers are just not there, but that's what happens when you're competing with literally two of the top 12 overall players drafted in this year's class, plus a guy who's going to go probably top five, top 10 next year in, I uh, forget what his name is, but the young phenom, other wide receiver out of Ohio State. So you have three elite wide receiver prospects you're competing with for targets, you're not going to get the ball much. But Ruckert is a guy, I want you guys to go watch the film on these dudes and you guys can make the decision ultimately, obviously. And a lot of these tight ends end up coming out and we get excited about athletics and et cetera, et cetera. And most of them never fucking hit. But Jeremy Rucker, I think, is in a really good opportunity to kind of come up in a young ascending offense and make an impact in year two, in year three, and then become like the starting tight end in that offense. So I really like Jeremy Rucker and I really like this kid, Daniel Bellinger, that the New York Giants got in the fourth round. Early fourth round capital. He is just 21 years old, so he is uh, he is very young. He was the sixth tight end off the board, and they've got nothing out there in New York in terms of tight ends, man. They got fucking Ricky Seals Jones on a one year deal. He's so far washed. They have uh, Jordan Aikens on a one year deal, who's done nothing in the NFL up to this point, and uh, it's like fifty thousand dollars for them to be able. To, there's no dead cap for them to get rid of Aikens. Wouldn't be surprised if he's gone. Bellinger. I turned on the tape. I watched a lot of his game film actually this morning because I was doing his write-up for the Rookie Draft Guide. Bellinger is a guy who's going to be a much better NFL pro than he is a college player. And I think I might make a video on that, like five players that are going to be much better at the NFL level than they were in college based on statistics because Bellinger played for San Diego State and that offense was extremely fucking run heavy. They did not throw the ball a lot. And for whatever reason, like I'm watching him, I'm like, this dude's fucking athletic. He gets off the line like a wide receiver. He is very, very fast, like fluid. He gets up the seam, great acceleration for uh, for an inline tight end. And, you know, 6'5", 250, the typical size for a tight end. And they just, one, didn't throw him the ball much. But two, he was blocking a lot. Uh, I looked at some numbers and he ran a routes on just 75% of his snaps. So 
He was blocking on 25%. That number was 88th out of 103 ranked NCAA tight ends this year. However, this dude has like rock solid hands. Didn't have a single drop on 28 catchable targets. He he hauls in everything. He's not like a, a guy who puts up crazy yak numbers. I found some interesting numbers, actually. I'll fucking throw them out for you guys because why not? Why do I do all this work? So I'm looking at him. I'm like, he's not elusive. He doesn't really make guys miss uh, in the open field. And then I look at his yards after contact per attempt, 9.1. That was top five in the NCAA. And I'm like, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm wrong here. I look at his A dot, average depth of target, 3.7 yards. So his average target was only three yards from the line of scrimmage. I'm watching the film and I'm seeing him take screen after screen after screen. A lot of his game, he never, he, I don't think I saw a single downfield throw to him, which was really fucking weird given his athleticism. Screen after screen. So I'm looking at like his A dot was 3.7. His yards after catch was 9.1. Typically, the lower your A dot is, the easier it is for you to get yak, obviously, because you get the ball really quickly. Defenders are not up on you. You have a lot more open open field to work with. I look at his missed tackles force rate, and it's very, very low. So I'm like, okay, that, that makes more sense. You know, it's just a matter of having open field, yakking up the fucking the chunk, the yardages. Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, he, he's not great with the ball in his hands, but he's so rock solid as a receiver and he's very young. He ended up being very, very athletic. If you look at his combine performance, he was one of the more athletic combine participants there running, you know, sub four, six, five, 40 yard dash checks all the boxes across the board in terms of athleticism. Again, the raw numbers just not there because they're a run heavy team and uh, they just didn't look his way. And I don't understand why, but he is going to be someone who's a much better pro than he is a college player. Daniel Bellinger, don't forget the name when you want to stash a tight end on your taxi squad. Don't forget I told you. I think that's it. Who are you guys stashing on your taxi squad? There's sometimes I, I, I don't see every every player. I don't see it all. I know I'm good, but I'm not that fucking good. Who are some guys? I know a lot of you guys are probably like hometown dudes who watch certain colleges, and you're like, this is a guy to keep a fucking eye on. Tell me. Tell me. Help me help you. Okay? Help me help you. Who are we leaving on the taxi squad? Who are we picking up immediately after our drafts this year? Drop it in the comments. While you're down there, subscribe to the channel. Hit the button that looks like this. I love y'all. I'll see you tomorrow.